Yeah, but are you recording it? I'm recording the audio for my minutes. But you're not recording it on the stream? No. Can we please? No. Why? I was not ready to record it. <laughs> why, why weren't you ready to do that? I, it was board. But, but the board authorized the use of live stream so that more people could be in attendance and participate within their government. Why would you silence them? Are you sure, Rita, there simple. isn't anything more you want to add to that? That you've right, silenced them already? Later. That you oh, silenced them and you kept them from coming here? You the used policy. to take them out and by police? Yeah, we're not going to do anything. Yeah. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, to the States, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I suggest that we all read our oath of office as well at the start of the meeting for the benefit of Larry and Rita who failed. It is our meeting. No, it's not your it's meeting. meeting. It's our meeting. It's an agenda. I made a suggestion. I made a suggestion. No, you can't. Why don't we? I did make a suggestion. You can do it at the end if you like. Uh, do I think you should do it now. <laughs> you apparently Mr. forgot. Bradley, I'm, I'm here. Okay, Mrs. Rita Spinelli here. Thank you, Mr. Larry. Smith. Here. Okay. Thank you. Um, the first policy we're, we're here to review is policy 140.1. Uh, this is a policy in reference to students participating in extracurricular activities uh, who are attending, whether it be private um, or uh, cyber or charter schools. Um, this is an opportunity for the district uh, to recoup some of the funds that it cost. Again, you know, running a sports program is not, um, is not free. Uh, however, it is with our authority to um, charge the students to participate who are not directly enrolled in our public school. Because reminding when a student enrolls in a cyber or charter school, they do, they are not currently a student. Mm -hmm. You know, it's different from homeschooling. It's different from other different the lot of programs when they're not enrolled here. So you can see here the recommendation for the change are in green. Uh, you can see that the uh, way the formula is presented is all listed there. I do want to uh, bring up one change uh, for clarity purposes only. Uh, the district charge will charge a participation fee to those students who are enrolled in a charter or a cyber charter school and meet the requirements of board policies 122 and 123. The district will charge a excuse me, the district will charge the charter or cyber charter school the fee in which is associated with the expenses, and then that goes on to read that. So I wanted to make sure that I didn't want people to think when they're reading it that you're charging the student or the, the parents that the, the charge is yeah. going to the, the cyber. It's, it's or charge back to the cyber yeah, charter for the yeah. private school that they're attending. Yes. So why, then, why are you financially punishing the charter school for having kids participate? Because it's a cost to the district for them to participate. Why is it cost to the district for them to participate? How? If you read the policy, it is. Yeah, but how, how do you feel that they're causing our, our district to pay for it? Because the reality is, who pays for the school district's? resources for our athletic department would be the taxpayers and stakeholders of either our local district and the Again, state. we are not billing the, the students. Student, you're billing the, the charter school that we that already generates their revenue. The question becomes, they do they not have their revenue from, from, us, from us, sir. From us, from us right. because so they're doing our job. That, that, that we don't do that job. We don't do that job. We have 10% of our students not meeting the requirement. We're not doing our job. So they're doing the job that you don't have the right to do. I'm not twisting it. I'm not twisting anything. Follow the money. The money goes to the charter school. The student attends the charter school to get their education. They come back here for extracurricular or athletic. It is appropriate to assess a charge for having them to come back and do their activities. And there so, goes. The money that was allocated to that student to be done here within our district has already flowed out to the charter so school. So does it magically disappear from the charter school? It isn't my responsibility where it goes with the charter school. They, hey, they manage their own environment. Not but at the same time, but your environment that you're managing, you provide them with money. Hey, to do you so. know what? You, know, well, you can question all your life. I am questioning. That's why we have policy. You know, why are we talking about the charter school? I'm trying to make sure question. that Lee Heighton has what they need and to follow the money back with the student when we're supporting them here doing extracurricular Does activities. Does have a Why do you interrupt me? I didn't interrupt. I asked my question. Done. Does it does it not have what it needs? Is there any does this school not have what it needs for me to This would be a category like a person connected with 
right? Yes, right. yeah. So we can pay Connection Academy the 14, 15,000, whatever the formula is, and then in turn, if they want to participate in our athletics programs, we would then charge the cyber school for for them to participate. And that formula is listed there. And it's an average three year uh, divider we use for so if you look at our transportation cost, the uniform, materials, annual coach salary, officials, um, and other associated costs. So whatever that number comes up to based upon the amount of students that participate in that sport, uh, that charge would then go to the cyber school for them to pay us mm -hmm. in return. Yeah. So why does it make sense? Who's on the phone? Who's on the phone? Miss Lyle. Miss who? Lyle? Mm -hmm. And she's a teacher at the school? No, no. It's, Who's she? That doesn't, that's not a who is she? It's a a member of the public. Who is she? A member of I'm sorry, the is she an employee of the school? So, okay. so, she's, so she's a member of the public? So it does matter. Thank you. Well, the idea is to have a discussion at the policy meeting, Mrs. It, it is definitely supposed to be a debate. That's the whole purpose of a committee meeting. Question, if you don't understand policy, this, eight, maybe you should eight, run for the school board this someday. This is a new policy. Um, What's the matter, Larry? You don't this think that's great? Policy, uh, for I, have a, I have a no. I have a question for this policy. I have a question for this policy. Why are we charging charter schools when we didn't do it before for the last 20 years? Why would you do it? Why do we need extra revenue? This fund is so fully funded. You have so much extra money. You're not even billing other districts. You have. Is that, is that what you're doing? Maybe you should be a lobbyist for cyber and charter schools. Absolutely not. I'm trying to lobby Absolutely for the. The, all, the end of dollar paying is those taxpayers, Larry, the people we saw, we okay. sworn of the poll. 815 uh, policy. This is a new policy. Um, I know as we talked about in the academic affairs meeting, if you're able to, to follow up with that, um, we're having a number of new uh, purchases regarding right. student uh, devices. These devices will be going home with students. Uh, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's a one-to-one -one initiative, but for grades 8 to 12, technically it is a one-to-one -one initiative. Mm -hmm. um, so this 